Hey, settle them down. <laughs> Did the party go? We're just trying to get in the meeting. <laughs> we are live. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to bring this committee into order. Welcome, everyone. Uh, additions to the agenda. You want to have any additions to the agenda? I have none. Yeah. May I mention what we talked about? Yes. I'd like to speak about an opportunity to uh, uh, invite someone to present the council for a renewable energy project for municipal buildings. We just put renewable energy? Yes. Anyone else? That's that's what, yeah, she talked about the renewable energy and the grant. So, um, then were we, at, were we adding that uh, the Golden Lake? Uh, email that came in today for the Golden Lake property. No, that just for That's just in for information. information. Okay. And the yeah. request for the arena, Kevin's going to uh, touch on when he does his report. Perfect. So I don't know if we just add it, but I just. I think that was in response to the comments I made in the newspaper. Yeah, perfect. Any, anyone else? No. I'd like to report on the police services board meeting we had January 26th. I overlooked that. And uh, I'd like to report on my attendance at the. Robbie Dean Center at, at the, the Diners Club here in Eganville. Okay, motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve the minutes of February 20, February 7th, 2023. Any errors or omissions? Any comments? Being none. Motion I move John. acceptance. Thank you. Okay, is Daryl here? No, I know. Daryl is going to be late because he had an injured finger. So if uh, you would like me to go first, Mr. Chair, I'm happy to do that. He will be here today. Kevin isn't here? No. Annette. Okay. So one question, Annette. We're not on the screen. Does that mean we're not? Live? No, we're live. Yeah. Okay. I usually only put it on the screen if there's somebody speaking. So, uh, yeah, Daryl is going to be a little bit late today, but he will be here. Um, he's on his way, so he might be here in about half an hour. Mm -hmm. So if you look at uh, my report. Um, right there. So I did do a quick paragraph about the mayor and I attending uh, the Roma conference and the delegations and the presentation that we put on that that was already covered in her update. So I didn't go into great detail there. Um, staff working on the 2023 budget and year end. Financial statements will be presented to council. Usually they're presented in April uh, by our auditors, McKillican and Associates. And the final budget is usually presented in May because we still have to have meetings with uh, the library, then we'll have the meeting with staff and then a formal presentation will come forward for council. The Horticulture Society is requesting their annual grant of $1,000 for plants and flower boxes. That uh, resolution is for consideration at council uh, this afternoon or this evening. I just wanted to, in case anybody had any questions on that, none. And there was a um, proposal from Eganville and Area Community Development and Eganville Rotary Club regarding the installation of a play structure at Legion Field. So direction needed for staff to go ahead with the work with these groups on the proposed project. So I don't have a lot of detail or anything like that or budget implications at this time, but if the um, committee is, is willing and the mayor may have more information because she's actually on the Eganville area, so maybe I'll just turn it over to you before I look for her. <laughs> yeah, just as an aside, um... This was just thrown out as a potential project, but knowing that um, after the, you know, after it's built and paid for, it will fall on our recreation staff to maintain it. So we just wanted to make sure that you were aware and that if you had any concerns, <clears throat> it was a request that came from a few parents where, you know, one kid might be playing baseball, kids using splash pad, and could they have some sort of apparatus? So just looking for direction from the committee, can I go ahead uh, with those two groups to say, yes, we are interested, please proceed in looking into it. And then we can come back with a formal, this is the one that they want to put in, here's the proposal. Do you think staff? Yes. Yeah. yeah, there's no harm. That's good. So staff direction. 
Believe me, perfect. I'm and that you. question? Yeah. So my wife's on the board of the Horticultural Society. Yeah. Because there's no financial gain to be had, that has nothing that we're good on. No, yeah, because it's for the society. It's not, they're not paying her directly for the, uh, the flowers, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, good question, though. Mm -hmm. The next part was uh, the support letter that came forward and staff received direction at the last meeting for Service Ontario. So working at collecting um, the support letters from our partners so that we can we can send it forward all, all together at once. Uh, March Madness. So I, I know we did have a talk conversation about this and uh, Tracy has worked hard and Dana as well, putting together this uh, winter fest is what it was originally called, but now it's being called March Madness. So there's a full list of activities. We will be getting an ad together this week because it will be going in the leader next week and posting more about it. But we've got, you know, the curling club, the Rotary Club, the library, the Seniors Echo Center and the Legion and the township, the museum. So many groups uh, have come together to support uh, this week of activities. Most of it is going to be on the, on the weekend before March break. There's some really incredible stuff happening, uh, both at the tourist booth, at the museum, at the arena. Um, some some virtuality stuff. I don't know, Tracy, if you want if there's highlights you want to give because I know you're 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 passionate about it. So I don't want to take that away from you. I think Brent will want to hear about the virtual reality and the gaming trucks mm -hmm. that we have coming in, transport trucks. So there's going to be virtual reality, Sims racing, all kinds of stuff. It's similar to what you kids would rent at parties, um, party buses. It's like that. So we have three of them coming in. We also have ice bumper cars taking place at the venue. Oh, yeah. Sunday we'll have a bonfire. Saturday, we've got Night at the Museum for the kids playing Night at the Museum. We've got a guy dressing up in a dinosaur costume. Oh my gosh, there's all kinds of things happening. Horse and buggy rides. Are they adult-sized bumper cars? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think you should have a competition in council or mayors by their region. No, but I was just thinking, you know, we were just talking about doing the trivia night as a team building. Maybe we can uh, do some bumper cars. Or the gaming. Oh, I I've never done it. Yeah. I've never done uh, VR. Neither have I. It's going to be a lot of fun. It has something for everyone. It's not just for one demographic. I considered buying Dave and I the goggles one Christmas just because you can, you know, you can see different parts of the world and like. I think it would be great for the Echo Center. They would be. You know, but anyway, yeah. I get wicked vertigo. I'm just wondering if that, uh, yeah. Anyway, there's going to be lots of tons of activities on the Saturday and Sunday. So the Saturday's focused. Uh, downtown core and then Sunday's focused on the bank. Love it. So uh, bringing this forward to council because of course um, this project is part of a fund that the museum got uh, for uh, from the federal government and so what we're what we're looking for is to float these projects because of course they didn't have the money yet but they're going to be reimbursed after when they submit the claims. So looking to float it through the um, through the township and also um now there is a thousand dollars for food so right now um through the museum i think we have about seven thousand seven hundred dollars being spent on winterfest that can be re reimbursed from the fund but we need an additional thousand uh, dollars for food and so really looking for uh council and the committee to give us direction to move forward with that thousand dollars as the contribution uh, and then, uh, yeah, we're we're good to go for uh, for the for the Winterfest March Madness activities. I know that there'll be some sweat equity from council mm -hmm. on those days, but I think we've got to have some skin in the game. So I'm I'm in. I'm deeply saddened by the cancellation of the polar dinner. Yes, personally. it's but, just too uh, short notice. No, I know. I have liability and just many things. But yeah. I'm I'm willing to put some skin in the game in other places. In the Absolutely. You're an old fan, old fan polar bear, were you? <laughs> I was going to do it with John. <laughs> next year. Yeah, next year. Same or possibly time. later this year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty cold in November. Well, we'd have to drill a hole in the ice and it was just kind of, yeah. The ice Anyway, is like Jennifer, I'm in. All right. Good. <laughs> okay, so um, there there are other portions of this fund that will be will be coming forward uh, later on, and it was about a hundred thousand dollars total. Uh, but the museum is meeting tonight to sort of go over all of those activities. So um, too soon to report back on all of those. And it's not a fund that we're supposed to be reporting on. Correct. Yes. So, um, Debbie earmuffs. <laughs> it's not a it's, it's in writing. Yeah. 
It was a last minute. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Therefore, last minute. Yeah. There will be an announcement later on. Yeah. Stay Officially. Tuned. Stay tuned. Officially. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, also, the big announcement is what the fund's being used for. That's right. Right. Yeah. So the next part of the report um, is the council remuneration. So I didn't know if there were any questions. I included portions out of the app for anybody who has never seen this report before and why are we doing it? And uh, it's because it's required of us. So I don't know if there were questions on uh, the report on the remuneration report itself, but uh, reported as it's supposed to be. So. so that's tabled and made public. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And the appointment of auditors. So needing some direction as well on committee here because our auditors uh, will continue and they are um, right now going to be auditing our year end for 2022. So there's, you know, they're still going to stay on. Technically, we're going to pay them in 2023 for 2022. It will be approved back. But going forward, what is it that uh, the committee would like to do? Do we want to ask them for a proposal to say, you know what, how much you if we reappoint you for the next two years, three years, four years, we can't go past five. Uh, you know what? What are you going to charge us? Because I've done that in the past, where I just asked them for a proposal to come forward to say, let's say they're charging us, um, you know, twenty thousand dollars right now. Are they willing to stick to that? Are they willing to only do a two percent increase? What are they willing to do? Or we could do an entire uh, request for proposal, which is it, which is we have time because we only need to have it passed by the fall for who's going to do our 2023 audit. And then uh, people could submit proposals and we can review them at that time. So what, how would you like me to proceed with the appointment of auditors for the 2023 financials? Yeah. So I, at this time, like to ask Sandra Barr if she had uh, has noticed anything amiss or anything that we could do better with our auditing process. I, I don't think so, no. Okay. They're a really well-respected firm, I, I, um, and I will. I will just. I know that this isn't the same as the county, um, but after forty years, we lost our auditors at the county of Renfrew and had to put out an RFP for new auditors. So I would. I would also hate to lose them. They are also a local firm in Renfrew that hires local people. Very positive. But no, I would say stage a proposal and just bring that back to you. Like my, it's my opinion, like prepare, like see what kind of proposal they want to bring back for a two or three year. Okay, so, so get a, get some quotes for a proposal, quotes yeah. from them first. Yeah. We'll look at that and then decide whether that's acceptable. And if not, then you can go ask yeah. RFP. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay. okay. And actually one of the uh, one of the people working for McKillicans on our audit will be Billy from our part. He's a counselor. He's a 22 year old counselor that went to Roma and just, he just soaked it all up. This young man is, he is quite impressive to say. What time did you Prior. Yeah. 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 So uh, they did ask me if we would have any issues with a counselor at another municipality uh, who also works for them as an auditor looking at our financials. And I, I can't see any reason why there would be any issues. Yeah, see any conflict like there. No, I mean, and I don't think that we have state secrets here, so I think we're good. <laughs> no. You're far enough apart for marriage. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the next thing on my report is the fire chief recruitment. So council knows a little bit about this because we did go into closed session at the last uh, meeting, but we couldn't disclose everything that was going on because we still had to decide whether council wanted to go this route uh, and then had to have conversations with the individual to see if they still wanted to go this route. And so what I can say is that recruitment has been successful. Uh, we did have uh, five people apply to the position of prior chief. Unfortunately, they were all uh, some distance away and uh, both uh, Daryl Wagner, who was the previous, was the fire chief at Greater Madawaska, Dave Murphy, our current fire chief, and myself went through them. We met. Uh, we didn't think any of them would be a good fit for the township. So we had a discussion at that point in time to say, okay, what are we going to do? And I did get reached out to from a couple of different municipalities who are were wanting to do a joint uh, fire chief recruitment. And I can't disclose any of those people because they're making their own decisions at this point in time. So I did uh, meet with some of those CAOs. We had those types of discussions. And in the meantime, um, our CBO, Daryl Wagner, did uh, come to me and say and express an interest in um, 
being fire chief again here uh, instead of at Greater Manor West. So fire chief and CBO. However, the bylaw is just one, it's just one too many tasks to put on an individual. Uh, but we can contract that out or we can hire that out. Uh, so that's the discussion that I had with council. Um, it's probably the smallest piece of the puzzle and the easiest to, to replace. And so that was, was the decision. So I believe that uh, Daryl and Dave did have a discussion with the, the fire department um, last week. And so they are aware, didn't want to make it public without them being aware, but I know this agenda was on the, on it, on, on the uh, website on Friday. So they met Thursday night. So that worked out. Uh, worked out good for timing, so I don't know. Uh, I'm sure Debbie will have questions for Daryl maybe when he gets here. Uh, and uh, that's yeah. So moving forward with that, it'll be March 7th. We'll bring forward the appointment bylaw for council's consideration. So at the moment, Dave Murphy is still our fire chief until uh, such time. So just um, I just want to go back to something that Annette said <clears throat> um, because we are central um, and have. You know, a very well running fire department. There were several mayors at the county of Renfrew um, over lunch that said, Hey, can we get together and chat about sharing services? And it absolutely would have worked beautifully. Uh, but as you all know, when this presented itself, Daryl's well known um, in our community and by the firefighters. And so I think that I think that this was probably the best way to go. Mm -hmm. Even though I, I really think that we need to start sharing services uh, at this time, I, I well, think that this worked. This appointment doesn't pre prevent us from sharing services in the future, it but we need not. to give the gentleman some time in the in the chair. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And I think when we get to sharing services, we'll become a full time job rather than a part time job. Absolutely. And that was a discussion, of course, but um, I agree with John. I think, um, you know, perhaps down the road, yeah. if uh, fire chief is going to be administrative with uh, two ICs, whether that be a deputy chief or lieutenant or captain at each of the halls, um, that might be something worth looking into. But for now, agreed. Let's let let's let them get it get these two jobs under control, and then we'll we'll revisit. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so that is all that I had for my report. I do see that Kevin is here, and yeah. Hopefully, Daryl will be here uh, shortly as well. With two arms. Yes, with okay. two arms. Okay, Kevin. Yep. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Good afternoon. We meet again. We meet again, yes. The curling club really does look great. It does, again. yes, it does. It uh, took some time, but it was. Uh, and this product is pretty well completed. We saw the final touches being put on today, just the county bears and some of uh, the, uh, the bathrooms. And I thought a little spirit as well. Bottom line is worth it. Yes, at the end of the day, yeah, the, the upgrades, uh, it's like any renovation. Once you start, you always find some surprises. <laughs> and, uh, that's what happened. <laughs> I, was also, I, I was a little concerned with how small the kitchen would be, but it's surprisingly large considering that the accessible washroom is, is very large. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Well, it's used every uh, little inch of space. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, well, no, it was good. So I'll start out with the arena. The, we're working on the, the uh, marriage madness. Uh, there's a calendar out where there's tweaking it, and uh, everybody has their hands in, so it's uh, going well. So everybody's doing their little things. So we're Trying to get everything together on it. Uh, public skating uh, is going very well. Uh, it's returned now because our tournaments are, we have one more tournament left, but uh, so other than that, it's going really well. Um, working on the budget right throughout. Uh, Mumps and Todd skates, uh, our numbers are from 20 to 25, great, very solid around there. Um, just a question. Uh, I'll ask council, and I've been inquired if if we're going to continue in March. My my feeling is it's going well, so good yeah. representation of everybody. So it's not broke, don't fix it. That's yeah, yeah. If people are enjoying it, yeah. they're getting out. Let's leave it yeah, open. No, we're getting good response. So and you've seen different faces coming out. So the words are getting out there. So 
when does ice go out? Ice going at our last uh, is March 31st, is uh, figure skating has their grand finale that night. So they have the uh, the ice rented plus the upstairs rented. So that'll be the end of the uh, end of our season. And how many sponsors are you short if you go through four weeks in March? Sponsors in. You, you mentioned here we're still looking for sponsors. Yeah. For well, sets. all of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the sponsors are public skating sponsors on our problem. Yes, it's just the senior skating. Yeah, yeah. And sorry, and this is the once a week or twice a week? Just once a week. Once a week. Okay. Thank you. And is the sponsorship the same as the public skate? No, it's a little different. Uh, the public skating is $130, the yep. senior skate is $100. Okay. Any other questions? And we have uh, one new uh, uh, school advertisement up on the wall. So that's an addition. Uh, they reached out and I said, absolutely. So they got the. Uh, Sign made, so we got it up as soon as possible. Um, the four and four uh, hockey tournament fundraiser. Um, minor hockey's reached out. You probably saw the letter. So, what's the input from council to me on this? I'm absolutely in. You know, I'm yeah, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, that was the late breaking email that everybody got. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so township is covering yep. everything. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yep. It's good. Do, do they want us there? They didn't really say anything in that nature. Uh, okay. But you know what? Uh, if there was a time that I thought it was uh, you know, maybe around lunch, then I'll talk to them and see what uh, when's going to be the best time okay. to be present. If, should we communicate what this is we're talking about? Do people online know or, or not? Oh, yeah. Sorry. It'll be the, what's it called? The Lisa Sharp. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't know if anybody sorry. knew. Yeah. Well, I just, I want to give you the right name. I can email you the letter. Maybe. Oh, okay. Thank you. It does not seem to want to come up. Oh, yes, it did. The Lisa Sharp Memorial Four on Four event. Um, there, her son Leo plays with Eganville Minor Hockey uh, under eighteen team, the Eganville Eagles, and it's from so on Sunday, March nineteenth, from eight a.m. to four p.m., and it is in fact a a fundraiser for the family. Um, I was in the Centennial Park this morning thinking that the outdoor rink would survive Mother Nature, but the uh, majority of it is uh, down back to concrete again, so um, it, <laughs> it doesn't look good. <laughs> like it's, I think it's... Uh, this year's just been so yeah. weird. The Rideau Canal isn't open at all this year. I know. Yeah. I was hoping, like last week we checked it, and it, was, it wasn't near as bad, uh, but today with the weekend sun, <laughs> the cell side is uh, break down to concrete. So, yeah. Anyways, that's a shame. Yeah, it is. It is because there is some nice weather, colder weather coming up. But it's it'll it'll be short term. That that's right. That's right, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, short, we're already at the end of February. Yeah, no, it's it's a shame that it won't be open for March break though. Yeah. Well, Unless they're real, like, you know, the weather changes and you're like, you know, it's getting cold, but uh, how much time do you want to put in for? I know, but merch break, like kids, mm -hmm. they'll be looking for things to do. Well, we'll keep, we'll definitely uh, watch yeah. the weather. Keep and, your eye on the weather. Yeah, yeah. And, and reach out to, like, you know, Dave's been very good to, like, you know, a couple of guys come and give us a couple of good floods in the cold nights and, uh, and then we can maintain through the day kind of deal with little floods on. So okay. We'll see. We'll see what goes on. Uh the tourist booth, we got the outside plug put in. For, so we'll have that well it's on. It'll be good for uh March madness weekend. So and 
Early rank, we all looked at the project up there, so we need touching on it. I love how proud the contractors were. <laughs> <laughs> they really at yeah. the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we've uh, Dana and I and uh, we reached out for uh, summer project or summer students, uh, so it's in the paper, um, and we we'll have some applicants in, but uh, we'll see what goes on. But good to get them early. Oh yes, for sure. Yeah, lots of other towns are doing the same as well. Yeah, that's getting an early jump on it. Well, the other thing is we need lots more to do this summer. With the partnerships of the Bonisher Youth Action Committee and you know our recreation department, if the Eagle and Area Community Development Group want to come on, I think that there are some real opportunities this summer to get back out. And you know, this is the first real summer without COVID where we haven't been sort of biting our nails and waiting to see what's going to happen. You know, you plan something, you have to cancel it. We went through it for two full years where, you know, you, you have the best of intentions yeah. and then you kind of get beaten down. And I think this summer we know that we're, we're good. Yeah. Um, so I, I really, it's, it's time that we really amp up our recreation. I think it's something we should table for another meeting and have further discussion on, honestly, because if you're counting on volunteers, as we all know, there's volunteer burnout, right? Oh, yes. So I think when you, know, you talk about collaboration, what does that look like? And yeah. who's going to be accountable to make things happen? Because that just it's one thing for people to volunteer to be part of a committee. It's another thing to actually roll up their sleeves and do it. Right. <laughs> so you said that so <laughs> so well, Tracy. That was very true. I just don't want to talk about any. I want to have a plan. I know. No, I know. Our skin but I, game. I, Let's do it. I think that our recreation department should <laughs> drive it. <laughs> drive it. Through <laughs> how can we help as a community and a council? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Tracy and I have had this conversation <laughs> probably 10 times over merch madness and yeah. you know things that she's tried to start. So <laughs> noted. Okay. <laughs> well, it's a tough one. Um <laughs> That's the end of my report, unless you have any questions for, for me. Six foot bench at the rock. Has anybody talked to you about this? And the sign. Like, yeah, well, the sign, the sign is on the, the bench. bench. Okay. Yeah. The, that's uh, why we need a six foot. Because right bench. now, I think they said it was a four foot. The, the, that, uh, sense? that bench has been there, but it has been removed because of Halloween, because it does get moved during Halloween. Oh, that's fun. Really? Yeah. Okay. So that's why Where's it's it go? that's why it's <laughs> <laughs> Does it disappear? <laughs> anyways, that's why it was removed. It's, we, there is one there for it, but it's not there. But is it a six footer? Yes, it is. What? No. No, it's a five footer. Thank you. Okay, we need a six footer. Can it be there by March Madness weekend? I can or a sign or whatever that the, is. The sign is they the have okay. the ACDG has the sign, but it has to go. That's right because the bench was five feet. You're right, Kev. It's got to be six feet. It does. And the question was, does Kevin have one? Because we all know we're municipal hoarders. Mm -hmm. So is there one lurking around somewhere that could be used down by the rock? Because it's been far too many years that the rock is just a piece of furniture now. There's got to be an explanation yeah. of why the rock People is don't there. Know why the rock is there. We can definitely put a bench there, but it won't be six feet. It's got to be because the sign is six feet. Can you talk to Dana about it? Dana knows. Yes. I don't know what you saw on our show on TV a while ago, and I don't know what committee, the talk bench, where it's not able to talk bench. So a retiree goes sits down, and somebody else can buy the talk bench, and they talk. And okay. I mean, if you want to, if you want to call it a talk bench, no. Oh, but Merv, this is specifically for the sign that explains why the rock is there. Okay, on the corner. I'll have to look and see if we can get a six foot bench. Yes, one right? I'm sure there's one in this municipality. Yeah. <laughs> Every building we go into, you probably just have to disassemble one of them that we have, and then you just put 
you just have it's all treated lumber, right? Yeah. So you would just pull off your ends, put on six foot board, and yeah, then you're fine. Brent is willing to make one. <laughs> That's what I want. Everybody <laughs> heard that, right? Oh, no. But you'll, yeah, okay. I mean, you may just have to put a third, like a third pillar down the center. Anyway, when you're done here, go and ask Dana. She knows. Yeah. But somebody in the ACDG has the sign. Okay. Okay. And it wouldn't fit on the five footer. Makes sense. Can I, can I add one more thing for Kevin because he's here? Flags for the museum. They're, they're tattered. And do we have new ones we can put up? Yes. Before March, Madden. Yes. Did the women centennial get? To, yes. Okay. You know, it was the amazing. Was after that, after I got that Facebook post, and uh, one of our residents wrote back, ours got shredded in that storm as well. That was that Thursday night storm. Um, the it was the opening ceremonies of the games, and it was just wicked. And the, that weekend, I was driving around, and I noticed so many flags. We're just shredded. It's a sensitive issue to not just Canadians in general, but to our veterans. Absolutely. Large here yeah. Those should be. Yeah. You know. so. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin will get up with a little header and put it up himself. Yeah, you know, let me know. <laughs> not today. I guess we'll move on to correspondence. Carol did come in. I saw him. You can? Yeah. yeah. Does he have both arms? Dark, I hear him. Somebody go down? Don't mind. Okay, well, we can go ahead with some more respondents then. Sure. Any concerns with correspondence A? No. Yeah. Correspondence B. I'm just looking at the request from our ground road. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's still a question whether we own it or not. We'd better. We've plowed it and so, serviced it all these years. <laughs> we we own it uh, in that it's our road, so we maintain it. We have all of the rights to it. But we don't own it in in titles, in land titles. Oh, I see. And so they want to actually transfer it to us in land titles so that they get the natural severance is, is basically what they're requesting. So taking it to council to say we agree to accept. I mean, it's ours regardless. But I mean, we agree to accept. It's, it's title. just an old cleanup, so is what I. Thought. It's, all, it's, it's housekeeping. Basically it's housekeeping, yeah. but yeah, I got asked before I signed legal documents to take land. I just <laughs> love that sitting here for thirteen years and we're still doing cleanup from. 50 years ago. Unbelievable. Um, okay. The uh, letter regarding the Cannabis Act, um, Brent and I just had a brief chat. I find this um, quite convoluted as well. I understand what they want. What they want is a review to take into consideration uh, the cannabis plants that have been built in the, since that Health Canada allowed them, but I think it could be worded better. Mm -hmm. So, what do you, you want, think? We want to bring it back at the next meeting for support, yeah. but, but word it better. Uh, uh, yeah, well, it just has, it's like anything, it just has to be specific. Like, yeah. I understand the concerns, like the concerns on the commercial end, but it's more the medical, like having to be the capacity to grow, that's fine. It's common area municipality. But yeah, I think it just has to be uh, more specific. Okay, so you want me to? Talk? I, did you? Yeah, it didn't make sense. Like, it, it's not it's too convoluted, and, yeah. and I agree with Brent. The ask is not there, the specific is not yeah. there. So, yeah. what is the ask that you want? I, that I, they. Review it for. I, I can send in specific wording, I guess, in it. To be I honest, to. and then we can bring it towards the next. And then put sure, that bring it up the next. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. But I. It just I, means it's more. It's more specific to our area, just because like our site pearls, everything like that. So yeah. it's more just making sure that it's separate, but it's also just focused. Sure. Because it, to me, it's like passing a letter, but it's just general. It's no different than the other email okay. we got today. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then number two uh, is a request for sponsorship, and number five is the library. I don't think we do the studio tour sponsorship. 
There's been a uh, discussion, I'm part of an artist group. Yeah. There's discussion about this team doing something here in our community and that the fees for the, the studio tour for that specific one is $400 per person. So there, some of, many artists are considering not going in it because of the fees. I don't want to speak on behalf of this group, but they're, they're in discussion about doing their own tour. Okay. Um, thoughts? I, I don't uh, recall ever doing it previously. No, we, we've oh, yeah. never. So we've other never than in kind, you probably do in kind promotion, right? I guess. Yeah, well, we so do, so do, do the banner. We do the banner on the bridge. They do, yeah. pay for, they do pay for the truck to come in and put it up, but we do, obviously, we're there helping Yep. And we do that in kind. And it's also good to know who signed up for it when we look at these things too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because we don't really who's have... Who signed up to take part in it? I would want to know. Yeah, like uh, my understanding, like previous years, we've always just allowed them to put the banner up, but yeah. they had to pay for the to put it up. Okay. Sure. Sorry. And there's probably, I mean, there's probably many groups that have asked, right? Uh, and that's the it's problem. You can cherry pick. You can't do that. And so... And now I'm going to go to five and say yes, because it is the library and they are a municipal entity. Yeah. So that's that's also the difference. And we have found over the years that we sometimes are barraged with requests for sponsorship. I think that, you know, just sort of from a marketing perspective, there's a lot we can do to support their initiatives with online promotion and adding into more detail, even if we wanted to provide background on the artist, where to go to buy their work. Sure, that kind of stuff. Is a I great on our website. Yeah, yeah. Promote, you know, we promote stuff on uh, our our Facebook page yeah. that aren't municipal. Yeah, but take a deeper maybe to offer to take a deeper dive. Yeah, the promo. But as far as the library, uh, I'm really excited that this is back. Everybody mm -hmm. in favor of the library? Yeah, I'm good with okay. it. How's Lefty? Yeah. My apologies uh, for throwing a wrench into the schedule. Who knew a sliver was going to cause this much grief? I got I got to cut it off for you. you know? like it's just crazy. <laughs> there, right up to my right up on my elbow. So, got to go back tonight for antibiotics and back in the morning for antibiotics. Oh my! They couldn't send you home or something. No, I'm on intravenous. I still got it in my arm. Yeah, the What's commitment coming here today. The ladies just said your arm just kept growing and growing. I am committed, or I should be. You should be. <laughs> and our doctor said just amputate. Yeah. Well, I said I said really I'm not to have it, so I really don't need this arm. But... It's like breaking your left foot. It's fine. You just accept it. Yeah. Did you get what you needed from us about the library? I did. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Sorry, just before Daryl starts, uh, Tracy. So just going back to the. Number two, this is the Madawaska artisans yeah. tour that exists, and they were thinking of putting a, looking to put a venue in Bonshire Valley property. No, different. Yeah, a different group of art, or probably some of the same artists. Okay. I mean, um, I mean, I haven't seen the proposal yet, but I did speak with a few of them. And there are there's interest in having something here, Bonshire, can't you? Yeah. So I understand the reason for not. Going to official sponsorship without knowing more about it, but uh, yes, I'd like to support them. And I yeah, yeah, and I think that's the stuff I mentioned. I think that's a great support, worth worth more than a dollar. You know, the dollar figures that are presented. Thanks. I also like to buy a painting during the tour, so that supports as well. Mm -hmm. Dave loves it. <laughs> I do the same thing, and I think the support of the library to be helpful. Okay, well, uh, good afternoon. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll go to a building, buy it off, parking, and then we'll get to the uh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> the information I came for in the building is two permits from us, first of the month of January. Um, I have been feeling on some calls, so I'm not sure if we just keep moving forward on that. Uh, cloud permit is in the soft start. So, what's going on right now is I am inputting the permits, start. And once I get comfortable at it, I want to bring the contractors in and do a night at the Eagle's Nest and show them because they have to start doing it. And you have to create a profile. And once you create the profile, you're in it forever. It's going to be the people that are doing the one-off permits and they should work a little bit more. The contractors will get familiar with it and and they will start out to start to use it. So it's just the I'll just keep updating as I move forward on it. So. This was a big topic at Roma. 
a lot of um, the delegates were talking about whether or not, you know, how their local developers and builders were going to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is other um, you know, software out there as well. So I think most of the people I spoke to were using this one. Oh, yeah, that. there is city reporting. Uh, there might be another one that I'm. Just another word. I'm not sure what the name is of the name right now. So. But we've got cloud permit. So we have it for another two years. I think, yeah. I think we signed on in three years. I think we're in year two. Yeah. So we have another year or two. Yeah. It was, it was here, I believe, so. uh, there's nothing really going on in bylaws. I'm pretty quiet. Uh, parking. I continue to uh, monitor the streets within the village limits. And I actually went out to Franklin Street the other day. I got up last night because I wasn't sleeping and I went out and I found some more infraction. There is one street that continues to be a problem. Um, and it's unfortunate because when I drove by, their driveways are empty and their vehicles are on the street. So all they did was back in there. So I, I, I can't, I issued three more infractions. I was up at the courts today. I had put in three for to go to plate denial. It's how people are not coming in, but they just. So when you can see that I've kind of broken down how I, I'm going to set this up. Uh, I actually, there has been concerns at Lake Clear, but there's not a lot of fishing going on there. The ice is not very good. So, no. so it's been pretty quiet out there. But. So as far as for the parking ticket process, um, what I do is I'll issue the, uh, the ticket and it'll be reduced from 20 to 30 if paid within seven days. And then 30 if paid within 15. And after 21 days, if, if, the, if they don't pay it, then we go to Harris for plate registration. And then I send out what's called the notice of impending conviction. And then again, after another 21 days, if they don't come in, then I ask for the registry. I stick it on a the form. I take it up with a white copy to the courts. They send out a letter stating that this is what the fine's going to be. And if they do not pay it, then it goes to plate denial. And they go to get their driver's license, their hunting license, their fishing license, health card, and all gets denied until they pay the fine. Really? Yeah. So it's not just attached to their driver's license? No, it's attached to everything. Wow. Yeah. That's harsh. So that's the process. That's and I, again, after the third parking, if I find someone the third time, I will be calling in the tow bus. Wow. Because obviously they're not getting it. And I have made arrangements with Jim and Clan and Killaloo because the person, I think Mr. Holly is no longer doing it anymore. And Jim is pretty close. He's just up uh, the other side of uh, Deacon. Mm -hmm. I just I, obviously the challenge with this is our plow trucks and our operators trying to do their job and having to detour around and not cleaning the street fully, which is when we get the phone call that the plows aren't doing their jobs. But then the plow operator says, well, there was a truck in my way and I had to go around it. So it's sort of a vicious circle. It is. And I, whenever someone does call in and ask me about the infraction, that's exactly what I have to know. Say, if you weren't on the street, the, plow, the drivers can get their routes done, get them done quicker, more efficient. Yeah. Because that's why you're buried in the snow. Yeah. And I think a lot of it too is a lot of times I'll get calls from neighbors on the street saying they're a little, like, that's why I keep going up for this one street in particular. For the most part, everybody's been there. Yeah. Has it been mostly vehicles or is it trailer based? Like, is the is it the exact same as for trailers? Or there hasn't been a trailer. There's there was one. Uh, if there's a trailer, it's usually attached to a vehicle. Mm -hmm. That was one this morning. Mm -hmm. It was attached to a vehicle. Did it because the drivers are both snow? No, this, <laughs> this driveway was clear. He could have yeah. backed in. I thought the road's clear. The driveway's full. Yeah, no, no, no. no. I was picking up what you were putting yeah. down. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that's. That's not good. And the other thing is, I would I would hate if a plow truck slid and hit somebody's vehicle. Exactly. You know that that's also a mm -hmm. big concern. Sure. Big liability. Yeah. Is it a problem outside of the village? On uh, more rural roads? Do you have there was only one one spot that I, I went out and I actually uh, sent the owner a letter because it's difficult. To go. So what I'm trying to do. It's just give them a warning. Yes. I, I try not to. I use the I'm very strange of that. You're going to get your infraction notice. But uh, it's out so it's out in, in Hindford. So it's a bit of a stretch. It's not, it's another extra 10 minutes of driving. But uh, I'm hoping that's going to curb the problem. 
And what I'm starting to do now is if I notice a snowstorm coming, I will either go out after midnight or get up and go up between six and seven. And between hospital visits. So last night I was I just wasn't sleeping because I was in a little bit of pain, so I just decided to go for a drive. Okay. okay. So now we're going to move on to our control. Sorry, one question before that. Sure. So going back to the educational uh, session for the uh, contractors, could, could we be made aware of that too? Because I'd like to attend Absolutely. that. That falls into our land use planning stuff. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. So you have. You want them to read the recommendation to get along with the I don't know what he wants to do on it. It's first meeting discussion. It has to come back to council. Yeah. It's a good thing you're not handed. Yeah. Where is it saying I'm not going to get into that right now? Yeah, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So you have my report on the animal control. Um, I tried to turn over every stone I could to really dig deep into this. Um, I hope I covered everything that you were looking for. Carol, could you read your recommendation? And then I'd also like you to go through um, some of the experts that you spoke with. Okay. So my recommendation is that council close the dog found and form our partners and continue agreement with the OSBCA and Okay. And your reasoning for this, please, sir. It's the dog pound is not it's not an effective. It's I mean, we've had five dogs last year, most of them are returned to their owners. The dogs that were in the pound that have been in there for way too long. Um it wasn't, it's really not working. In my opinion, it's not working. Uh, we have a really good agreement with the OSPCA. Uh, the dogs that are picked up in Bonisha Valley are transported up there almost immediately. And within days, they are adopted out. Um, so what you're saying all of last year, besides Bonshire Valley and the other partners, we only had five dogs? Or five dogs. And, and most of them that were in the pound river have been in it since 2021, 2022. Yeah, that's two years ago. Yeah. yeah. No. And no. we've been empty now for, when did Buddy go? Uh, January. January? Yeah, so we just going to say just after Christmas. Yeah. So we've been yeah. empty now for, the present, there's no dogs in there whatsoever. We did have a couple of calls for dogs running. Unfortunately, one uh, was hit on the road, and oh, another, no. another one was picked up and taken to the owner. I find this community many people who find other people's pets, and this dog pound is dog pound. It's not all animal care; it's only dogs for dog pound. Just feel like I need to clarify that. They find the community it's kind of like a watch system where people find people's dogs. They post, I found a dog, and then someone, you know, they yeah. have them. Then the owner comes and picks them up. There's been more of that. Yeah, I, wa I walk at one of my neighbor wall two streets over, but you see people walking dogs, and I drive a lot, so I walk their dog last week. Like, you, you generally know in a small community yeah, yeah. where most Everybody of the Everybody knows that you know, animals were missing, it seems. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, and the dog that I phoned you about uh, near the roads department, that dog actually is from Eganville. Okay, there was another one that... The one that got hit, Johnny, was going back to Belleville and he stopped at the drugstore and the dog just jumped out of the oh, vehicle. Oh, no. And they couldn't, they could not. Like I was getting phone calls on it, but, you know, we do not chase animals. So if someone was to catch it, we would go into treatment. But we're not going to go ahead and try and tr chase the animal down. That's the service we don't provide. Even don't Rescue know. would tell you not to do that. Hmm? Even yeah. Rescue would say don't chase an animal. Well, and we could chase it on the road ourselves. Yeah, you know? exactly. For that reason? Yeah. Um, you know, it's just that's, unfortunate. That's really a shame. So, so the people I talked to, I mean, other than uh, uh, Jeanette, that I had this conversation with Tammy, I, mean, I did speak exclusively to the OSPCA, uh, Carol Boudreau in, in particular. Uh, Christine Walker, who is a, she's out of uh, Bancroft, and she does a lot with uh, guardian livestock jobs. Um, there was another lady out of Pembroke. She does training and she gave me a lot of good insight on how to read a dog's body language. And that's when I realized that the last dog that was in the pound was not vicious at all. We were just reading them wrong. 
And once you get the know, he's actually quite a lovely dog. He really is. So he just needed to get out of there. Well, we did receive follow-up photos of his yeah. his adopted home. Is that a foster? Home? He's the as I posted the video of the photos of Buddy. Uh, he's at a uh, he's at Christine Walker's. Oh, he is. Okay, he's with her. Um, the story of Buddy has been followed by many in the community and surrounding areas. Mm -hmm. People are quite happy and interested to hear what his life is like. Yeah. Well, and what I said to you a couple of weeks ago, we have a lot of Maramas and Great Pyrenees in this area. So knowing their temperament, like because we had them, um, it's it's very this report was very interesting. And I've actually I've reached out to Christine and I reached out to Carol and I've got them connected. I I said they, they never had the connection before and I I said, I'll send you each other information or your contact information. So it's just another avenue for either one of them. Like the OSPCA is, like, they really work hard on making sure their animals do not stay there. And it's the OSPCA who has the facilities yes. and the vets and all of that. Right. This town does not meet the needs of yeah. their, their care because it's not a shelter, it's a pound. So and as you can see from the level of service, I mean, if, if, if a dog is picked up here in Bonisher Valley, and is taken up to the SBCA. And if the homeowner wants to retrieve or the dog owner wants to retrieve it, they will have to drive out there again. Unless our animal patrol officer knows whose dog it is, and then they can drop it off at their house and then give them a warning about it at large. And if the dog is caught again, then we spring into action. I like what you said, it's the same price. So there's no ambiguity yeah. for the public to know that getting it, retrieving an animal in Pembroke is no different than here. It's just the time you're going to have to spend a half hour drive up. You know, mm -hmm. and a half hour to drive back. Yeah. Can our animal control officer read it, uh, the equipment to read a chip? Yes, she does. That does. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say that. Okay. If so, they're chipped. If they're chipped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they're chipped. When my dog, when I started the chainsaw and my dog ended up a mile away, <laughs> uh, the, the on the collar tag that goes with the chip, there's a 1-800 number and they were able to get my phone number and, and find it. So there's a, that gives a good alternative. You do do a good job getting dogs to chase them. <laughs> and as you can see from the risk implications that it is reduced liability for the township, the one that's a better overall well-being for the dogs. And the, the network that the OSPCA has is it's extensive. It's like they, they talk to other uh, OSPCAs and if they have to, they move dogs around, but they don't, they don't all last long. Because the vetting, I think, is the most critical yeah. for the dog that if it lives it on the road, it's injured, it's going to get the vet care if it goes to the SPCA versus the county. Well, Daryl, this is a very comprehensive report, and I certainly appreciate not only, not only the recommendation, but the amount of work that you put into this to give us the background. Um, you know, to follow up with um, with the ministry, um, this, you know, your sentence about deep clean weekly at minimum, sanitizing the entire kennel, including toys and bedding. Unfortunately, when we're only using a cube of water, we don't have yeah. hot running water. You know, there are, and that doesn't lend itself to sanitization. I, um, I really appreciate this report. Thank you. I, said, I started it early. <laughs> Because I knew it was going to be extensive, and I didn't want to be uh, at the eleventh hour trying to. Like I said I tried to turn over every stand I could. So. so, the agreement that we have with the SPCA does not include the other townships for whom we provided a holding and moving no, service. No, they, if they want to do an agreement, they'll have to do that on it. Okay. Yeah. And again, when we make this clear through the media or other uh, to the public. I think it should be stressed that this isn't just a dollar and cents issue. It is a dollar and cents issue, but the but the need to upgrade our facility would have been uh, extremely costly, and uh, um, that's I consider that to be the main reason for taking this decision. Yeah, yeah like I guess I mean I, I believe by the financial implications were I mean, the annual savings, right? I, and I I think that doing our tour of the dog pound. I think it gave us a sense of the upgrades that would be required. And I mean, you put in changing out fluorescent bulbs is not a big deal, but some of the other issues, they are a big deal. Yeah, there's no sunlight for one. For uh, out there, but having proper lighting, and fencing, run, all that stuff. Yeah. And it's a shame that we don't have outdoor runs. That's, you know, that is something that should have 
we should, probably should have rebuilt years ago, but it was cost prohibitive. And but on the other side of the coin, I mean, it was five dogs a week or something that makes sense, but five dogs a year. Yeah. And I said, I re reiterated is that this is just dogs. This is not animal care of cats or anything else, it's just dogs. And I think when previous council was in discussion and said that we should close the pound, I think that there was a general misunderstanding yeah. that that is that we collected cats as well and we don't. So I think that there was a bit of a, a disconnect mm -hmm. there that it was only for dogs. Yeah. So if you look at the amount of dogs that have been there and the cost per dog to care, it's quite high. And you can't control how many animals are going to come in. You just don't know. No. But I as I said I went back as far as I could to try to find a reporting as and it was you know a little scattered. But it was busier back when it originally started, and it just kind of tapered off. Yeah. yeah. Good job. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's all I have. So go feel better. I will. So we'll you. discuss this more and and make the recommendation that will come to committee next time, like the council. To council, yeah. yeah. Did you want to do a report before I get into mine, or I don't have a report. I don't have a report. Okay, I do them. I only do them once a month, so I don't bore the hell out of you guys. <laughs> well, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, we've still got to do eight point two and eight point three. Okay. So I guess we don't have to do eight point two, and we're sending eight point three to. Back to them. Yep. For an 8.3, um, so 8.1 is done. Yep. 8.2 is council and, or well, not council, but committee. And then 8.3, uh, I think following the agreement last time uh, was requested, uh, we just wanted to come to this one to have a look at the actual conditions and the site plan, which have been, which have been provided. So uh, it is only conditionally approved at this time. Um, they are the only thing I wanted to make sure I mentioned today is they're going to have a public and in, um, community information session on March the 23rd in the evening. So that will be published, that will come out. Um, we just got that scheduled today. And so uh, they are going to have another information session for people who want to ask questions for, for what their plans are there. And then once that information session is, is finalized, then we can bring the agreement back, um, I guess, to the first. Or his first or second meeting of April. What are they doing there? On Zoom. It's going to be done on Zoom. Oh. Yeah. So that will all be advertised. It will be in our newsletter that's coming out at the end of the month. So the link will be on there. It'll be on our website and everywhere else. So, yeah. I, okay. okay. That's not really ideal for everybody. That concerns me. Um, and I don't believe that's what we agreed to years ago. We only they agreed to put on an, uh, another information session. We didn't specify whether it would be in person or through Zoom. Yeah, because we didn't know about Zoom then. And they did have an initial in person session. We had a public meeting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The public meeting is this is not a, um, it's not something that's enforceable through the Planning Act. It's a request. We requested that they, that they, uh, have a second information session, um, and they agree to. So, if a taxpayer doesn't have access to his computer That's, and Zoom, then they're welcome uh, to come to the council chambers, and I'll have it on the I'll have it on the big TV right. for them. Absolutely, That's yeah. A good alternative. Yeah. and we could direct them questions back to the the company. Oh well. yes, okay. yes, they'll be they'll be here hosting it, and um, uh, my hope is that Bruce Howard can attend. Yes, the planner for the county. Uh, and you know, we'll all be here in the council chambers watching it on Zoom on the big TV. So anyone's welcome to join me if you wish. Yeah. yeah, I think we have to remember this isn't our meeting, but I think that we all need to be there to hear what the residents of point out, their concerns. Um and and that's our job. Yes, yeah. yeah. that's an excellent use of our chambers. That's what we it's there for. Exactly. Good. Yeah. Then just looking at I was just looking at 8.2, the council tourism initiative, like we discussed it, like tourism earlier, but I was going to say, I kind of took a different, when I saw it in the agenda, we discussed the last time I took it slightly different approach 
And I kind of took the approach of uh, it's just when it comes to budget time. So what can we do to support the tourism initiatives like from the municipality end? So I actually looked at it from the cleanup side. So from the brushing around our rivers, brushing in the rural roads, brushing the access points, ensuring that all our access points are uh, road signage or township sign, uh, all our visage is actually straight, proper, clean cut, looks good. Um, you can actually see it coming down from Renfrew Cider. And, and that's the, in and the EACDG is looking into new signage as well. No, and they're looking at that, but it's same as simple like when we're looking at the recreation budget, just if you go to make sure that our uh, weed control is is taken care of. So like in so like when you go around your Legion Street, your sidewalks, anything like that, mm -hmm. I'd be interested in reviewing the budget that has that taken consideration, be okay. it privately or municipally done. Just because you, the last several years, you can go to a lot of the roads go on Wellington Street, Queen Street, anything, and there's always overgrown weeds. So if the homeowner doesn't do it, which is not their responsibility, then we we should make sure. Uh, and then the other stuff was just, and I I know I emailed that in before as well to yourself and Jason as well, uh, was just make sure any of our like, um, um, so when it comes to like our road barriers, for example, like your yellow pillars, then you're downtown across from the Rio, by our uh, shop local sign, make sure those are actually painted and not rust covered. Same as obviously water department, obviously they've done a really good job actually the last several years, making sure the hydrants are painted and yeah. look, they look really good. So I think we just need to bring up any of our um, parts. It's no different than our gate on the BMO on the BMO side of the bridge, simple things like that. Just paint it, trim clad it, easy peasy. And like that supports tourism because then it looks clean cut when people come. And that's an approach that we can build on over as we're setting up a tourism right. strategy. And so, those are very simple. Well they're sim sim they they're simple, cost effective, but you yeah. you know you notice them. So it's like our garbage, some of our garbage cans in the municipality just need to be thrown out and put in just either the blue barrels or something a little okay, bit nicer. Nice. To bike on the garbage. Yeah. So, and that's how I looked at it. So, like, we did the Centennial Bridge, we put all the new boards down, all that, but it's your entrance to it, right? So, like, um, just making sure the pillars there, they're outside the bell, they're actually painted properly, the brushing down there. And I know that we should, when it comes to EGC as well, making sure that that site is all clean and proper because yeah. that's a visual. You drive our highway, we're through town, 41 and 60. We want every reason to stop in our municipality. So I think if we look at those, clean up those, then that's something that I'd look at. That, uh, so that's the approach I took at it because I knew we had a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's how I looked at it. I'd also add the, con put it together, put an easy content strategy that uh, talks about the, the growth in the area, your construction sites for one, right? Can people coming in won't know the story, that we are growing. We've taken away the derelict build, not we, you've taken away derelict buildings. And here's what's coming to town. And this is how we're growing. We're going to have a new apartment building. We're going to have, you know, the commercial, all of that stuff. But tell that story about what used to be there and how we're growing. And then tourists will look at that, but that's amazing. And a sign to have in front of these places would be expensive. Um, and I don't think that's something taxpayers would want to pay for. But you can build this story up online and tell people and do the right hashtag so that your communities and, the, and surrounding townships that they know. And to your point, I mean, Chad put up coming soon, like what yeah, yeah. those buildings are going to look like, um, but of course didn't put up a sign of what they were. But that's but just then, an idea, but, but I think people would be interested to know that. But you could just tell the story without, right. a, without yeah. spending money on it. And I heard that um, Brent's going to get out with black trim clad. Did everybody else hear that? Yeah. Trim clad and a bench. Okay, you got your work cut out for you. Merv, when you were talking about before, um, you said a talk bench. It's the buddy bench, is what they yeah. call it. They have them in Bancroft. And stuff. Yeah. So that's well, just, that's, that's on TV. I don't. Yeah. yeah it's, that's a specific program and stuff. So that that's what it is. Yeah. So. Yeah, and and getting back to what you said about garbage cans, we got to be very careful with the garbage cans downtown because I can recall when we had little bigger garbage cans and people were getting rid of their household waste and our street garbage cans. <laughs> and you know what? You're you're always going to have that. And yeah. we're 41 to 60. We're always going to have people drop stuff off. And that's why we, we, put in our, we put a realistic approach to it and just make sure that we check them every day, which Kevin does and summer students do. Yeah. So it's no different than the placement of our planners on at Conway's parking lot. Make sure they look clean cut when we're going there. And so well, that's that's, that's all that plan. that's all I say. It's like this year, if we, I think um, in my opinion, I think we need to uh, your boots up. So that's like making sure everything's clean cut. Your simple things are cost effective, and then after a successful year of tourism, then 
then we need to bring another approach into next year and work with your but members. i i do think that our community improvement plan needs to be opened back up i mean realistically we haven't changed it since 2014. if we're going to be in line with the three-year strategy then we need a plan we need a strategy a strategy to do it yep that is achievable whether it's phase one two and three identify that otherwise it's it's for not right and having a consultant create this and some of phase one and phase two sort of they they flow over each other and same with two and three so i think that if as brent said if we can find some inexpensive ways of of just cleaning things up mm -hmm. but also do one big and i know that there are other projects that you can't report on yet but um <laughs> we will talk about that another day um fighting my time i know i know you're so excited um but i think the cip is um that's good um return on investment well, for us. Well, I, I think the CI, I think the CI, yeah, hundred percent. I think we should open it, review it, and yeah. talk about it. But I think from the municipal, it's like for example, last year we improved uh part of our budget for the roads department was on John Street, the old fire hall. Like we put on the new roof and mm -hmm. painted the so it looks the exact same and stuff as the food bank. They just got paint the one door red this year. Um, and it's like it's simple things like that. But if we take all municipal buildings, because we're asking our ratepayers to improve their properties, commercial buildings, anything, our buildings have to look great. It's like, for example, like Township Office driving in. You have your one door, you have all rusty bolts on it, okay, great. But the door, it's all faded brown now. So we should make sure our standards are what we ask our ratepayers to be. In no, the irony was when we received the um, complaint about weeds. Mm -hmm. And there were weeds all around the township office. It's like Dr. Heal myself, what? right? You gotta you, you can't talk the talk, you gotta walk the walk. So but, but it's no know. different than say you're up in for up in Foy Mount. So if we're asking residents up there or commercial properties to have uh, property standards, then it's like we have to ourselves make sure that around their diesel tank is always whipper snapped around our boulders, rocks, all that, right? right. So it's we don't want to be hypocrites. I, I think it's under, important to understand what grants are available for this area. So any kind of community improvement grants. I know I know you guys know, but maybe it, um, I don't know if that can be tabled for future. I, I'm sure that Dana's on top of that 100. percent Just in case there is a committee you know that wants to take part in putting these grants together, who know how to do it. For sure. Right? It's, Absolutely. it's a huge value add. So unfortunately, over the last couple of years, those grants sort of evaporated. Yeah. Right. The monies were going to COVID relief, mm -hmm. you know, post-pandemic recovery, um, modernization. Those were the those were the catchphrases. I think now digitization. That, digitization. So I think that now that we're in our new normal. I think that we will see a resurgence of those grants. Yeah, definitely. But again, Brent brings up some very inexpensive, simple things to do. And the social media, tell the story, tell yep. more stories, keep talking about it. Yep. And talk about all the good things this area has to, to bring, right? The lakes, the fishing, the cottage rentals, whatever it might be. Let's actually, promote what we that, do well. Actually, that was, that was one of my actually uh, points I have around my phone. Um, but you just brought it up was that um, was actually on all our uh, so you're trying to promote tourism in our area so the thing is is like we should ensure that our uh, boat launches are 100 percent like that we have a like excess amount of gravel material make sure they're probably good up. and then but it, then it's to ask the, but then it's like then straight floor be it like be it like Blair Thompson Lake Golden Lake um, Launcher River right like to make sure that they're all proper and then look at ways to improve that because if we're trying to promote tourism one of the biggest areas is uh boating fishing kayaking yep. coming to the area yep. it's the experience right and, and, and being collaborative with the other townships it's not just us it's it's surrounding it, it, be cognizant of the tourist journey when you're here you're not just going to bonnet valley ta township you're going to the surrounding community and staying and playing but i also feel that in the brain trust document that was suggested mm -hmm. right. that don't work in a silo. If yes. you, if Bonisher Caves is not in Bonisher Valley, we are not excluding them because they're in North Algona exactly. Wilderness Forest. Bring in White Hill Golf Course again, not in Bonisher Valley. I think that there are opportunities. I don't even, I, it, I, I think that we're now in a place where again, we're not. We're not just walking the walk, we're ta or talking the talk, we're walking the walk with our neighbors. Mm -hmm. I think that this is of interest to so many councils in Renfrew County of 
what can we get together and cross market? And that you'll find too, I was in all of those sessions as well. And this is an area that's important to me, but um, it's not because we lack accommodation here unless someone's renting a cottage or Airbnb. Exactly. And you know that your visitor, your marketing is the day tripper, right? You mm -hmm. think of that Beatles song, day tripping, <laughs> but that's who you're talking about primarily. The well, people correct. you're going to pack up from Ottawa, maybe. I mean, many, and not just Ottawa, pack up for the day, come visit, you know. And, yep. and and appeal to them all year round, not just the summer. But I also think that, you know, after the disaster that was the Christmas holidays, people are looking for staycations. Mm -hmm. They are looking to discover Ontario. I like your line. We won't lose your luggage. We won't lose your luggage. That that so with our that was cute. <laughs> with our when when uh, Tracy was when we were in committee with um the Youth Action Committee and the museum. Yeah. Um, I said that that should be our our motto. Mm -hmm. Come to Bonasher Valley, we won't lose your luggage because that was a disaster. And all we heard at Pearson uh, Airport and at yeah. Vancouver was, no, next year we're not. We're going to discover our own province. Mm -hmm. Well, I just thought uh, it kind of like the the bow launches is more stemmed off of uh, MERS last, I think it was two committee meetings ago about the pickerel, right? So yeah. it's like the Wally up in Golden Lake. So, mm -hmm. if, for example, it's like, okay, so if we're focusing on that, okay, let's make sure our, our own municipal bow launches proper up with a high standard. So then people will utilize that to get more people in the area. So that's how that's kind of the approach I took, guys. It's, it's something yeah. simple. We own. We own trucks, we own gravel. And all social media, exactly. I said one cute line would be uh, sexy, sexy fish swim here. <laughs> but, uh, just on my fishing initiative, <laughs> I, I can go back to the late 40s, early 50s, when a lot of these lodges and resorts were built, and they were built on fishing in Golden Lake. And I would say 75% of the customers back then were from the state. It's a long time since I've seen a car with U.S. plates on it. Well, just Red Pine Camp, you find. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing being that fine now we run around with high powered boats pulling water skiers to do to do sea dues and whatnot. But what happens if gas gets to be three dollars a liter and that dries up? What have they got to go? They don't have fishing. They don't. So what's going to attract them to come here? And that's why I'm big on fishing. There'd be something else to attract them to come here. Agreed. And all year round, not just the summer. Ice right. fishing is probably just as popular. Apparently, this year it has been a disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They even there was a huge um, fishing turn, ice fishing tournament that was scheduled for this weekend, and they had to cancel. I don't know what lake it's not, on. Not a, not only that, about a week week and a half ago, and maybe some of the rest of you saw. Oh. I saw oh, that, that saw that God. saw that the water was starting to come through the snow on top. So you're, you're going to have a quarter source slush there. So forget it for ice fishing. This right. Year. That's a that's a huge fishing tournament, right? Okay, so it was Muskrat Lake had to cancel. Yeah, which they probably got water on the ice too. They probably do. Yeah, and I just think that you know whatever strategy is is thinking of their local businesses and what they have to go through all year round and not just have it waited for summer, right? Right, because they, they need to have something that we're promoting that we're getting people for four seasons, you know, not just the summer. Well, and I, I have to tell you, I know that the Algonquin Trail doesn't run through Bonashir Valley, but my uh, brother and sister-in-law and their three sons uh, snowmobiled the, almost the entire Renfrew County Algonquin Trail this weekend. And they just, they had a blast, right? And they stopped in different towns and they bought gas and they yeah. bought food and they bought, so, you know, I, I completely agree with you. I it's a shame we don't have it because it is quite an incredible trail, but speaking, I think there are opportunities. Speaking of trails, uh, I gave them permission to go from the railroad line to the lake, and they used to go across Golden Lake and come off the lake at the sands. Oh, yeah. Okay. New ownership in the sands. I don't know what went on, but apparently they snow fenced it, not allowing the snowmobiles to get off the lake, so no snowmobiles crossed the lake this year. Oh, that's a shame. Or stopped for dinner. Yeah. Or stop for accommodation. Yeah, I think. But it, yeah, there used to be cool snowmobiles there in the wintertime, renting cottages, eating, and whatnot. I don't know what's going on, but there's I not a I strange. didn't haven't seen a snowmobile across. The, there's, there's snowmobile hasn't been across the lake. The little trail has never been marked out. That that would bring in, I would assume, big business in the winter. I don't know. Yikes. Okay. Anyhow. So, Brent, 
good suggestions. I assume that the if they we're successful in our student grant, those are appropriate jobs for our student core to do. Yeah. Wonderful. Some of them for sure are. Yeah. For sure. Yep. Yes. And to that note, we're also participating. The uh, Renfrew County Clerks and Treasurers uh, invested a thousand dollars of uh, the funds that we have raised over the years to participate in the uh, job fair at the Shaw Center in Ottawa. So all of the, I don't know, all of the municipalities in Rancho County are on board, but most of us are. So we're putting a bunch of job postings and stuff in there, and then uh, you know, we'll see how that pans out. So right now we do just have summer students uh, positions and obviously always hiring for firefighters. So those are kind of the postings that we have going on at the moment, but definitely still going to want to send, uh, it's not till April, but going to want to send information down there and brochures and stuff for the township. So, and just getting people involved in municipal. So we have these little wrap cards as well, all paid for through the, the Renfrew County Clerks and Treasurers Association. So uh, they're going to be That's putting great. that together as well. You know, come get involved in municipal. So we're, we're doing our best to continue to attract people uh, into this industry. And, and hopefully uh, this will be successful to get people knowing that there's jobs here. And so we're all working together as a county to, to have a table there. So uh, we'll see how that works out. I think it was $1,000 to get a table at the, at the Shaw Center for the job. For the job. And, it's, and it's run through... Um, uh, of the job, the Canadian job site. So it'll be, we'll have access to their website for a month and stuff like that. So um, just, uh, yeah, that's it's a great recruitment yeah. idea. Mm -hmm. And there is a job there as well coming up in Meganville uh, in April, not the same time, but uh, being run through the Employment Network Center and uh, Algonquin College. That'll be a smaller one. We, we ourselves are going to participate in that one as well. So working on on uh, telling people that we're here. So don't forget about us when you're looking for employment. Where, where is that taking place at the employment office? I think it's taking place at the employment office. Oh, okay. They want to know pe want people to get to know where the actual location mm -hmm. is. We yeah. did offer up if they had more candidates, we could move. we could talk about getting to the Eagles Nest. But I think they actually want people to come and visit their office. So they're doing a small one there. And then Algonquin College is also working on, I think, doing a few more, like whether they're going to do one in Renfrew and one in Pembroke and whatever, but there will be one in the hotel itself. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so if anybody wants to think, know somebody who's interested, I, I don't know how many people they can host there, but uh, you know, contact um, Peggy's Michelle. Okay, move on. Police Services Board, we had a meeting January 26th. Uh, statistics wise, charge wise, it hasn't changed over the last three months. There's nothing, nothing spiked over the last three months. Unfortunately, uh, I had uh, made other arrangements. I gave, gave myself an hour and a half for the meeting, and Sandra had other commitments, and the staff sergeant was late, mainly because of the murder that day. Right. So anyway, what, uh, what uh, I want to get back to at the next meeting, uh, the staff sergeant indicated that um, two of their officers now have training for mental, for mental health calls, and apparently they're a couple of nurses that have, have mental health training that have also volunteered. And I want to get into, for my own information, at the next one, I know the Mental Health Act has been greatly revised since the 1960s, but I'd like to get into, given the situation, how do you handle this now? From when, how the, when we handled it then? I'd like to, just from my information as well as are it. they teaching that at OPC or is this? Is it what? Are they teaching um, mental I health think so. response at OPC. OPC? Yeah, yeah. Wow. But uh, the, I guess the trick is to get people away on courses. Okay. Yeah. So they're not, but they're not, so they're not doing it in house like once they go not, to a real not, not to my now. Okay. No. It might actually be better because, like, if you had specialists yeah. in your detachment. Yes. Interesting. But uh, the next April meeting, I want to get a little deep, more deeper in this. Of course, uh, we in Oshawa were right close to Whitby Psych. Right. You know, the, and at that time, the Mental Health Act says says that in the opinion of an officer and a supervisor, uh, strange in right behavior. I might attend that meeting, Merv. I'm I'm intrigued. Okay. Now that leads me to the Robbie Dean Center. Uh, when I found out that Monique was doing a presentation at the, the Diners Club at Seniors, 
I made, made want to make certain that I was there. And uh, I said, we hadn't met for a year, but then I went through an old file. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and they even trusted me with scissors. I do that. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, the Robbie Dean Center, Robbie Dean was Monique's son that committed, mm -hmm. committed suicide as a teenager at open site in Eganville. So what I wanted to know was, we had made provisions when we opened the clinic as how that clinic went along with the Robbie Dean Center. And uh, it's pretty well finished here because she said that there's no interest. There's no. Yeah, they because there's, they there's were no, doing it once a, a week or what. Yeah, yeah, but she said there's no interest. There's, for whatever reason, there's there's no, no patients coming. If there's someone that had a problem, they'll send someone out from, from Pembroke. Mm. Uh, anyway, going back to her presentation, there's uh, I've got some cards here for anybody that wants them and anybody that wants to uh, organize uh, a presentation with her. There's some groups here may want to hear what she has to say. It's a very, very good presentation. Their, their term is a, a, so, a short session, six, six to eight weeks. They have grief, uh, grief and loss counseling. Their community outreach, pet loss. Somebody has to go in the hospital, or for the this OSPCA is giving them, I think, two weeks or something like that free. Um, depression. They've got that problem. Survivors' help, death in the family, anger management groups. So anyhow, this is here. Uh, uh, to be left here if anybody wants to interest. If we have people in the community that wants to volunteer. They'd be welcome, but uh, and thank you for going to that. It might like I couldn't make it, so I was happy to hear that yeah. you were able to go. And the big hug in front of the constituents because we hadn't seen one another in eight years. Yeah. <laughs> That's very yeah. much. That's it. Anything else? Uh, John had uh, he wanted to talk about the renewable energy, Mark. Okay. So. I've been in, in contact with a group called the Ottawa Renewable Energy Cooperative, and they're a group of private investors who place solar arrays anywhere they're welcome. Uh, one of their biggest projects was placing on the roofs of Catholic high schools in Ontario, and they generate considerable power through solar arrays. Uh, for the just as a, a thumbnail, for the placement of the solar arrays on top of the Catholic high school. Uh, it involves no cost to the school board or the taxpayer because investors will buy shares in the cooperative and that pays for the erection and the management for the life of the project. So as the, as the electricity is generated, it's sold to the building that it sits on top of. And uh, <clears throat> at various times, the government has various programs. But right now, what they do is they sell the electricity to the building or to the school underneath it at... Uh, at a saving because there's no delivery charges and other things like that. And the second thing, which is even, which is very important these days is for the life of the project, which will be 10 to 12 years, the, uh, they are guaranteed the rate at which they signed up on. There'll be no increase in hydro rates for that building. So, so that, much like a fit, but in reverse. It's okay. like a fit and has, op I mean, actually started in the days of fit, but they're, uh, but they're going. Would they be using the hydro themselves or shall I get the hydro? And buying no, it. this does not in, involve selling it to hydro. This is selling it to the building that it sits on. So in that case, a school board. So um yeah, but what I'm what I'm telling at, and I don't know what it is now, what they're getting now, but at one time the, the solar panels and the windmills are getting like 72 cents a kilowatt hour and buying it back for 13. So like why wouldn't you sell it to the grid and buy it back at a lower price? Because that doesn't that program doesn't exist anymore. Okay. And the and all of the panels that you pass on the road to uh, Renfrew and elsewhere, those those turn contracts for those this is unrelated to the the group I'm talking to about. But that government program is coming is coming to an end in the next year or two, and it represents uh, there'll have to be a decision made by the provincial government as to what to do about that. And just uh, as an aside. When the Darlington nuclear power plant is shut down for refurbishment, we're, it's likely that we'll need those. There may be an extension on it, but that's that's not what I'm talking about here. Yeah. But what's, so what's interesting about this, John, is that we 
at one time we're looking into a second dam and we don't have the transmission to Cobden yes. required. And so what I think is interesting about this proposal is that you're selling right to the building they're on as opposed to trying to feed in to transmission lines that we perhaps don't have and then buying it back. That's correct. So the return on investment for the investors, obviously it would be diminished because you're not charging the same as Hydro One might or your town Hydro, but they're still charging. It's very interesting. So my uh, my accountant looks at my investment and says it's a good investment. It's very similar to a GIC or a bond right. in which for for twelve years I make some money off it and uh, and recoup my initial investment. So, um, so the advantage that I I'm, I'd like to invite these people and I was it, it's a little bit pushed ahead of my my original agenda because Annette informed me that we are applying for a grant that might also involve an opportunity for uh, renewable energy. I don't care how it gets in. I, I think it's a good idea no matter how it gets put up. And if it can save the taxpayers money, that's a good idea. So I would like to invite to this council a uh, delegation, including the past president of the Renewable Energy Co-op and, uh, and maybe a board member or two who would have expertise and engineering expertise, things like that. And they'll come in. And at the same time they make their visit, I would uh, like to invite them to come and look at the municipal buildings that seem to make sense are the arena and the curling club, both of which have energy uh, demands. And my wife very wisely said we should look at Fairfields as well, although it's not a purely municipal building, it could also lend itself. So I'm going to meet with uh, Kyla and see if that if I could bring them there to have a look. Basically, they need to look at the roof and then learn who they would talk to about energy needs. The big advantages are the investors pay for it. And I know when, when people talk about proposals coming into the area, people are interested if, if a bunch of people sitting in Toronto or Ottawa are going to pocket the uh, the uh, profits, then that doesn't always go the right way. But in this case, anybody in Renfrew County or in, or in Ontario could, could join this cooperative and be an investor as well. Uh, so the investors pay for the proposal. No tax dollars, no municipal dollars. Um, <clears throat> The uh, renewable energy array, let's say they put uh, 30 kilowatts on or beside the arena, uh, it would be pay installed and managed for the life of the project by the cooperative. And the, uh, the municipality wouldn't make that profit, that would go to the investors, but they would be guaranteed a rate for the next 12 years, the life of the project with no increases. And they would be, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, oh, and, and no delivery charges, so a saving there as well. Uh, no, I think that's what I'd like to do. So with because of Annette's telling me about this grant application, uh, she's going to ask the people who are doing our grant application if there'd be a, a, a possibility that we could use alternate ways of putting the renewable energy into place here. And we'll see where that goes. Uh, and I would like to bring these people to our council and they could speak for themselves about uh, and, and have a tour of the area so that they could say this, this, and this makes sense. It does not include any extra uh, uh, demands of the grid. So it's uh, it's nice in that regard. That's the most important thing. For here, yes. Yeah. 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 That sounds great. I do too. So the two the two pieces to that so direction uh, for inviting them to be a delegation so that's been approved so that's great. My second piece to that is we as as previous council members we had a two studies done one for uh, the arena and one for the curling club so they came forward with initiatives to uh, move forward and to improve energy efficiency and apply for federal funding which is eighty percent funding which is actually stackable with another grant which is twenty percent funding uh, for these initiatives. So uh, when Kevin and I went through them, two of the initiatives were solar panels on the arena and on the curling club. We didn't add them to our, and the grant is due February 28th. We did not add them to our original proposal because we were replacing what we already have. So we know we've got ice plants that need to be, you know, chillers and, and uh, different pieces of machinery that things that have to be replaced in the next five years. Anything that had to be replaced in the next five years, we were like, yes, that's a no-brainer. Let's apply for 80% funding for that and you know move forward with those things because we have to we have to replace them anyway and this fund has to be spent by 2026 
So, you know, but anything that was, this is a new, this is something new. Uh, it doesn't have to be replaced. It's not going to, you know, recover the dollars. It's not a, a you know, going to give us return on investment. And we're asking council to kind of spend money. We took those elements out of the, the study uh, because the application is due very fast. So we can have, have a ton of time. And so the solar panels are uh, something that we removed from that. So I guess the direction that I'm sort of looking for from uh, committee here is, do you want me to put those back in if this is something that we're moving forward with, um, you know, do you want me to put them back into this proposal? Because at that point, then maybe they could be covered 80%, or do you want me to put one back in? Uh, you know, I was going to say at least the curling club, because okay. I see the curling club as being a much simpler project. And then perhaps for the arena, we go in a different direction with your delegation. But I think the curling club could be self-sustaining. And if and you know what? I've got to tell you, they're going to want to see a green piece. Like not only if they're going to want to see initiatives that aren't just replacement. And and the curling club would be net that they would achieve net zero, net zero yeah. uh, with the uh, solar panels. They can power the entire club. That would be my direction. I'm, okay. I'm open. So, so I think you're right. We're looking for flexibility in if if the grant says you can do it, but you have to use Joe's company. That doesn't help us. I, yeah, it won't do that. We want to know that there's flexibility in how we achieve the green goal. Yes. Okay. And then uh, just to to go back, um, so we were why do, uh, so we removed both those part of the applications. That's right. For the for the timing purposes, because it takes invest like it's. 80% funded, so 20% investment from the township. And it was like this, the investment was significant, right? Because they are, you know, we're talking million dollar uh, solar panel project here. So uh, for the arena, anyway, for the curling club, it wasn't that much. Maybe it was, uh, you know, $350,000. So, but we would still have to come up with 20% of that if it didn't get covered by the stackable grant. And so because we don't have it now, I was like, well, now we're going over and above. The, the point of this study was to find efficiencies and to save money, not to invest in, in growing the curling club and the arena. But I can add them back in, both of them or one of them, if uh, if committee would like. Uh, we have time, but I need to know today because we've got like it's due February twenty eighth. And, and I'd envision that the the people that I'm going to invite here to de to delegate will uh, will know how to work this because they work with other properties that are involved in in complex management and maybe our 20 percent contribution could be uh provided by investors absolutely yeah Something there's no like reason that. why it couldn't be so yeah. well, if, yeah. well if if we move on move forward with solar panels right we haven't even had that discussion yet or reviewed anything yeah right? that's why we, have we to see the like cost and balances of it mm -hmm. like to me to me if, if for like the purpose of like a for the grant for the grant side like we just want to make sure it gets it gets in obviously if we can say yeah. have it the curling club but if not that's not the direction that we're we're going to be going into then they, they're two separate they can be two separate issues uh -huh. like that's kind of how i looked at it like if we're looking at one being uh no cost to the township that's separate than having one that we have to pay 20 to 80 for right right if we weren't going to Right, but if we can, if we don't have to pay the twenty percent because it's going to be paid by the investors, mm -hmm. then maybe it makes sense to put them both back in, get the panels paid for by the grant, but get the maintenance and the installation and all of that paid for by the corp by the corporation. So that's that's actually a really good idea. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I retract my earlier statement. We'll we'll gather more information so that we can make a better decision. Yeah, but I need to know today if I'm applying for it. Now, now if we get if we get approved. And I didn't, you know. We can change the scope of work. I say we do it. I think you should apply. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. Sounds like a good solution for taxpayers. Yeah. Good work. Well, it wasn't very much work. It was uh, good people at the other end, too. Connect on the dots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Are we finished? Yeah. Motion to adjourn. No, 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 no. Our next meeting date is March seventh. March seventh, okay. and and before our next meeting, we'll be meeting at the Eagles Nest at twelve o'clock.
for a lunch meeting with Norfolk and Overforce to look, look at the library budget? Right. Yeah. But we're going to be there at 10. No, no we're going to be there at noon. Well, we're not going to be there at 10 anymore. We had to change okay. some Yeah, we had to switch it up. I did email you, but you were probably wrong your way right here. <laughs> okay. we, had to, we had to switch up a whole bunch of county meetings. And so Mayor Bros couldn't make it at 10, but he'll be good for noon. It's, it's been a crazy time. <laughs> Everybody's busy. Yeah. Good. It's, uh, we have so much in common with NAW that we... Uh, we we need to start compiling a list of things we can do together. James and I have been trying. They're very very approachable. Yes. Yeah. Good. They've been trying. Maybe a session. Um. So is a recommendation coming to council then uh, for about the dog pound shelter? I think we will have, probably have another discussion about it at our next meeting, and the recommendation will come to council. So March 7th, I'll add that to the agenda. Okay, so not tonight. I think we all have to digest it. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, the other thing is uh, the, when was the Dalcan uh, meeting? I know, I know March 23rd. not running it. March 23rd. Yeah. Okay. What time? Uh, <coughs> it's in the evening. It is in the evening. Bear with me one second. <coughs> March 24th at 6 p.m. Perfect. Okay. All right. That's it for me. Thank you. Now you can call for an adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Yeah, we're out of here. <laughs> I just back, Matt. <laughs>